So basically this is, now these are the applications, the AP application. Now what do we do? I'm going to tell you overall picture. This is the first weekend, the first two day workshop that we've done. We've got it. We need a lot of system. So you have exactly two days. We call it consultative workshop. At least a winner. What we've done yesterday and today. Consultative foundational. EIDCC foundational foundational workshops. Where we basically set the stage and make people live, live the methodologies of learning, live self-directed learning themes, live communicating Islamic English, live thinking about Islamic English, exactly what we wanted to do in the eight weeks. Simple. Then what do we do? Very simple. The start, the, the theme. Of course, before this, I do two hours training, like what I'm doing now. Or maybe one depends on the level of the people. You know, it's, it's very simple, by the way. Now, week one, you have week two, you have week three, I'm coming to the third one. You have week four, you have week five, you have week six, you have seven, you have eight. You don't need to do this, this is yours. This PowerPoint is yours, you don't need to do anything. I we give this package is all to the older people and all the forms even, the tracking system, everything. Now, I don't want you to see the weeks now. I want you to go, I want you to do to look at the bottom. As soon as people come to AIPCC program, there is a contract between us and them. Charter. Charter for us. This is the vision, this is the mission, these are the objectives. These are the principles, this is the way of learning, they know this. And this is what we're going to be achieving, and these are the assignments, and these are the, okay? So this is like basically very spelled out very nicely to them. So what are they? We are working now on, on a, an actual contract, okay? The first thing, we establish communities of commitment. You remember, our these goals, leader, global leaders, and communities of commitment to lead to present Islam all over the world. We're not thinking about a country or a center or no. We want people to always look way, 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 way there, universally. That's one thing. So we establish these communities of commitment. So we have our team in Riyadh, in Jaisan, in Kuwait, whatever it is. We establish the team. That's the first thing. Secondly, there are two mandated, two mandated assignments. And I still have not got into the weeks. What are the two mandated assignments? Using kids communication letter, the individual, to do 14 assignments. Seven assignments, look below, you know, seven assignments, seven readings of pamphlets. Seven readings of pamphlets. This is what we do in Rabba, we'll take their pamphlets and we'll use it. So the content will come from Usul. Okay, and seven pamphlets, uh, and seven, sorry, stories of why people became Muslim. These are the minimum mandated assignments that must be done using the model called Kids Communication and Learning Letter for the individual. What we did in the workshop yesterday is for the team. But for the individual, there is Kids Communication and Learning Letter, uh, and they are almost the same except for one or two steps, almost the same. And usually we also pass this to you. Okay, one of the most important things that is mandated, you have during the eight weeks, you must see a non-Muslim, one non-Muslim. These are the minimum. So you have to look for a non-Muslim after applying this communication and learning letter and changing these brochures into messages, so you take two brochures or one brochure, depends on how how fast you are with these brochures, but during the eight weeks, it's a must to finish seven brochures. So you have two messages and you find non-Muslim, and you start a conversation with them. We don't tell you what, how to do it, we leave it for you. The most important thing, we need these two messages to be sent to you to this non-Muslim, that after this encounter, huh, the third week, it is on the third week, you come again and 
the people start, you talk for two hours and people start asking you questions about what you did with this encounter. And there is an analysis. Usually a person will analyze and write a report for one page. One page about this encounter. Asking, sorry, answering six questions. What are the six questions? Who is your encounter? How did you feel before you talked to them? How did you feel while you were talking with them? How did you feel after you talked with them? What questions did he ask? How did you answer them? Simple. And you capture this encounter. It's very simple. You just capture the encounter. Meet with this answer. Then you come next week, which is basically week number three, and you stand in front of the people, and you give your reporting, people will start evaluating the encounter in terms of techniques of da'wah, in terms of content, in terms of the questions and the answers. So you will be evaluating all the people, basically, that did the encounter. So, so during that week, if you have 20 guys or 20 ladies, they are supposed to do 20 meetings with non -Muslim. Because at the end of the day, this is our field. This is our practical arena. So they have to do this. They come and you do this evaluation. And they are da'wah. Uh, sorry, and what is it that you did? And you evaluate how did you do it? And there is a lot of questions. Basically, you together evaluate this. This is week three. But now let me go just take you back. Of course, you are supposed to do weekly projects. I will come to this. You're supposed all the time to do reflections. This is one of the contract in the contract. There is always learning and reflection. And of you at the end of all these eight weeks, you are supposed to manage the knowledge. Okay. Everybody is asked finally to give a project, a presentation to non-Muslim, minimum 10 minutes, maximum 15 minutes, put on PowerPoint presentation, then deliver on the eighth week. The eighth week usually is four hours, no less than that. Because you have 20 guys and everybody needs 10 minutes to 15 minutes, this will take some time. But you have to finish the eight week, your eight weeks all the final PowerPoint presentation. Somebody might ask me why PowerPoint? Because the PowerPoint, you'll give it your utmost attention, it will be an Islamic exhibit on the move because you'll be exhibiting nice pictures, images, animation, and all that. Then we take these PowerPoints from you, We'll put it on my site, we'll upload it there, it will be set up Ajaria for you, for anybody else to take it over. And we pass the baton. What does passing the baton mean? Yani? But, uh, passing the baton is in the relay for the three days. When you take the baton, give it to somebody else. Somebody else will take it to somebody else. Somebody else will take it to somebody else. Yes. This is exactly what we do. So basically, we start learning and teaching each other, and we pass and we coach each other, we pass the, this to somebody else, and somebody else, is, and we continue like this. Well, there. Now let me a little bit go back. So the first week, basically, people will come. Before starting, it's better, before starting the program is to get the orientation of the program, like what I'm doing now, the eight weeks. You showed them this exactly, exactly what I'm doing now, okay? Then you start, they start the first week. It is only two hours first week, two hours. People start standing and introducing themselves. They say why they are there. They say, uh, they just introduce them. They say why they are there, making sure that they okay, to evaluate their English, to evaluate their confidence, to evaluate them. Also to evaluate uh, their level of da'wah by asking them to tell us a story about a da'wah meeting that they did before they came to this program. Now, this is where you place you place their da'wah level, you place their language level. It's like a placement test. <coughs> so basically, you place their da'wah level through this story, because through the story, you can see if this guy or this lady is really into da'wah, or mashi halif, kamsi kamsa, wushi washi, and she is not into that stuff. Okay, so here where I can concentrate more on her to ignite her passion for Dao more. And the regular language, the here will tell me if her language is strong or mediocre or reasonable. Okay, and also the level of confidence. Why I'm doing this? First of all, I want people to, I want to 
understand the level of both as I said our English and remember I want to put people into communities into teams and I want to put somebody who's strong somebody who's mediocre somebody who's weak so I have to put on the table all the levels not one level I don't want you to put strong with strong no so we have to put all 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 levels that's the first day طبعا with they finish us now if I have remaining some time I challenge them with some questions you know just to see their their level of uh, English like, to, to see if they, really, they know how to answer these questions they are basic questions about 40 questions you can use one two three four five whatever it was we usually give a PowerPoint presentation called what does Islam stand for it's a very important presentation that we give to anybody who would like to talk to non Muslim there are about four questions and uh, if you have remaining like five minutes or ten minutes you will use this question just to burn this is called burning platform burning platform questions where you really put them under the heat just to keep the ball going yeah. this is the first week the second week you just repeat what we did yesterday the ladies they know this Sheikh, you were not with us yesterday so maybe you don't know this but the ladies this is exactly what we did yesterday you do it the second week and this takes four hours four hours Clear? Four hours. Now, during this second week, this is the week that we tell them to go and meet non-Muslim and to report it on the third week. Analysis of encounter. Clear? So analysis of encounter, the preparation for it will begin before the third week where they go and meet non-Muslim. Now, the fourth week, the, during the third week, we also prepare them for either. There are two activities, and you have to choose one of them. Either you prepare them for a Muslim-Christian dialogue, where there are scenarios, they do the scenario amongst themselves. Somebody will come and imitate that these are non-Muslim, and will challenge them with all the concepts of Christianity. What do we do before this, the third week? We tell them, Read, there are two books. There is the book called Muslim Christian Dialogue, and there is another book called Christianity and Islam as seen in the Bible from Bahrain Discover Islam, written by an Indian brother, Sheikh Sayyid. One of the best books. Discover Islam in Bahrain, they distribute it. Or any other book in comparative. So, what we say, you team, first team, you take Trinity, you prepare for Trinity. Second team, you prepare for original sin. Third team, you prepare for prophecies in the Bible about Muhammad. Fourth team, is prepare for uh, crucifixion and crucifixion. Fifth team, you prepare about the Godship of Jesus or the Sonship of Jesus. We do this one before the fourth week. So they go as a team. Remember, they are the teams now. Of course, you have to put the facility. So they go home during the whole week. They just prepare something about Trinity, the team that he has got Trinity, prepares Trinity. Team Godship prepares Godship. Team Crucifixion prepares Crucifixion. Very simple. This is before the fourth week. Then the fourth week they come and you bring somebody to either act as a non-Muslim, Christian non-Muslim, and usually you bring somebody who is a non-Muslim before and became Muslim to challenge him and he has to play like what I did today. Or we tell them if it is difficult for them, we tell them to do it uh, together. One team will challenge, will act as an non-Muslim, another team will act as Muslim, or we tell every team to stand and present about how to refute Nabh Christian uh, Trinity, or refute Godship of Jesus, or refute Sonship of Jesus, or both of them. So there are three ways of doing it. Now, on the fifth week, but there is another Another one also, another activity that we keep it either or. You can also use, where is the book? Clear your doubts about Islam. Okay. You can also, if you don't want to use this exercise the fourth week, this, oh, you can use this. Clear your doubts about Islam. And they prepare for the misconception. And you can go either scenario like what I did. Or maybe one team as against the other, one non-Muslim, one praises the 
this conception, and there is this funny and nice and interactive like what I did today with this conception. Okay, now you can take this and do it, do it also on what you can do it uh, in the fifth week if you want. Or, uh, so that's another uh, activity that can you choose from. Now, the fifth week, during the fifth week, we also tell the people, go and prepare and, uh, as a team, watch exemplary speaker speech. Exemplary speaker speech on YouTube. So the team will go, one team will take, let us say, Zakir Naik team, Ahmed Dikab team, Bilal Fibs, Yusuf Mistis. So every team is supposed to go and watch one videotape and this video tape should be about basic concept of Islam, not comparative, if possible. If possible. We want to stay away from the comparative and go to the basic. So you find something for Zakir Naik about Islam, something about a woman in Islam, something about the Quran, about what? Okay, so the team, this, this team will go and watch, watch the exempt, all, all the teams will go watch the exemplary speakers. What are they supposed to be doing? They are supposed to evaluate. Evaluate what? They are supposed to be divided. After they, they, they sit together and watch it, they divide the roles of presentation. One team will present the introduction. Uh, sorry, one member or two members in the team or one member in the team will present the introduction. Two in the team or three will present the body. Two will present the conclusion. One or two will present the question and answer. So what are they going to be talking about? They will be evaluating. What are their criteria? The communication criteria we gave you yesterday and the day before yesterday. And they will also look at the content. So basically they will come the week after that, on the fifth week, and they will stand in front of the people and they will talk about their evaluation and reflection over that exemplary speaker. Clear? You see how simple it is? You could see that there is no role for teaching here. If you see somebody, if you bring somebody and he starts talking and teaching, he should not be in the front, he should be kicked out. Because this is based on self-directed learning teams. We want people to feel confident, we want to build their character, we want to lead people to move fast, we want more speakers, we want more communicators, we want confident people. Islam needs strong people. Not just to depend on somebody who wants to come and school feeders. So this is the fifth week. Now, what is in the sixth week? In the sixth week, Baba, notice here, I sometimes put two activities on the screen, on the screen. On the screen I put two activities. Why I do this? Because you can choose this or that. You can put this before or that after. There is flexibility here. But the other one is to bring a real non-Muslim. Now, how can you, if you could do this, fantastic. And you have a real discussion with them, and you tell them we are here to prove communication and effective communication because the world having the wrong picture about our Islam, and we'd like you to come and listen to us because we want to improve ourselves. And you know you've been here in Saudi Arabia for quite some time, and you know that Muslims are not in this way. We'd like to communicate. And we want you to raise some misconception, and we want you to be frank about it. And we'll be communicating with you normally. Because we want to learn. And we want to present the right image about Islam. So we want to also have people like you as ambassadors, but we'd like you to help us evaluate our also answers and communication. And if you feel that you are aggressive, tell us. If you feel that you are emotional too much, tell us. So it is a, it is a very nice uh, so indirectly you are telling him about Islam. Without coming to him and telling him you should become a Muslim. Like one of the Filipinos that we brought once. He just became a Muslim and by he joined the program. Unfortunately he was so passionate. We brought a Canadian guy and he's after that he said to him, Why don't you become a Muslim? So he ruined everything we did. I mean we've already told him everything about Islam. But see, why do we have to tell him this? You see? So there are some intelligent people and from people who would like to join and help us because there are good people, by the way, from the non-Muslim who really feel that you need to be there and explain what Saudi is, uh, Saudi Arabia stands for because we've been here for quite some time. We will, we will help. Some people go and say the nice words about us, by the way. 
and they are not all the same. And I've, I've been around a good friends of mine, I'm Muslim, American, Canadian. So this we can agree. I mean, that's an activity now. Can you do it or not? You have a choice, but you have other activities. If you cannot do it, continue doing misconception. Continue doing more. So you have clear doubts. So if you feel like you cannot do this activity, don't do it. Okay? Now, the other way of doing it is to bring non-Muslim, uh, sorry, one who will indicate that he is a non-Muslim and he will raise this misconception and, and, and you will, then you will, for, don't forget, every event there is evaluation and reflection and discussion of what has happened, the criteria of communication and the, the, the art of da'wah, you want to mention it, no problem. But on the seventh week, usually we bring a speaker. Now many people, and I don't like to bring a speaker in general. I bring a speaker, but who's going to be speaking more? You will be, as teams, will be speaking more than them. You will be speaking only for 20 minutes or 25 minutes, and the rest of the hour will be dedicated to all the teams to ask him a bombardment with question, 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 question. So you bring somebody who's really strong and good when it comes to da'wah, and his English is very high, okay, because remember, we are, we are improving our Islamic English. You don't somebody with broken English or an accent that is not really this or that. Bring somebody who's really strong in English and let him talk, and he's really, he's, uh, he's really he's got a content. And give him 25 minutes maximum, then bombard him with as many questions as possible. But you have to pave the way, tell him in advance, what is it that you're doing. You're improving this, you're improving that, so that he will not keep it. Because some speakers, they love to talk, and they feel frustrated when they don't finish, or they want more time. Unfortunately, we have a lot of people like that. They love to talk. Are you? So this is seven week. Now, this is the one, the first hour. The, uh, I think this is it. This is the first hour. The second hour, the second hour, you, uh, you start, remember what I told you, we have, we are supposed to be reading stories of why people converted to Islam. So, this is the time for using this hours to be dedicated for the people to stand and mentioning why. Because they are supposed to read seven stories and they are supposed to summarize each story saying what keys led this person, him or her, to Islam. What keys led this person, so they have to be short. So you read a story of one uh, page or two pages, okay? Then you tell us the keys that led this person to Islam. So every lady or every man is supposed to be standing and say the keys that lead this person. And if this is done, yeah, and it's not necessarily you do it the seventh week. Sometimes you need to take people by surprise. You take five minutes at the beginning, say, did you need uh, the brochure, basically? Uh, can you please stand tell us what you read so that you make sure the people are taken by surprise and they do their assignment. And they should stick to do their assignment. This is the seventh week. So, so there is a flexibility, so maybe you can dedicate every time you meet, like five minutes for people to talk about their brochures, the seven brochures, and the seven one converts. So. And the last hour on the seventh week, you make it, you dedicate it to finish, to finish up the seven, the seven one convert story. Or maybe one of those that he didn't have time to finish analysis of encounter with a Muslim, you can also choose at certain times for them to make sure you, you finish all, because you are required to finish all those 20 guys or ladies who are in the program to talk about their analysis of one uh, meeting with a non-Muslim. That's basically the program. Then, on the eighth week, people will be standing and talking and presenting their PowerPoint presentation directed to non-Muslim. Remember, it has to be directed to non-Muslim. I will repeat this again. Because I see people, finally, they don't direct it to non-Muslim. This is a failure. You don't pass the program if you do this. It has to be done to non-Muslim. This is your project. And the third week, you give your topic. And you can take your topic from the same brochures. And by the way, you can, if you read, if you finish seven brochures quickly and you want to add eight, nine, ten, no problem. It's your choice. We give you 